There, there you are, old girl. Ah, easy. You won't have to put up with me much longer, I reckon. You ready? Well, off we go, then. Wait, Wait, mister. Oh, oh, girl. Oh. Oh, oh thanks, mister. Oh, what do you want, boy? The governor in the office said your name's Hope. Jefferson Hope. Well, what if it is? There's a gent got a job for you. Good money in it, he said. Was it some kind of joke? No, honest, mister. Well, it better not be. All right, where does he live? This gent of yours. Baker Street, 221B, Baker Street. Here's the poor creature, Doctor. You can see he's suffering. Mm. I tell the maid I'd ask you to put him out of his misery. She's down there now sobbing her heart out. She really loves this old dog. <coughs> Don't worry, Mrs. Hudson. He won't suffer much longer. Thank you, sir. I'll go and tell the girl. Oh, easy, boy. Oh, poor old fellow. Now, look, Mr. Holmes, what exactly is all this about? Why have you sent for this animal? Patience, my friend. I now have in my hands all the threads which have formed such a tangle. I am as certain of the main facts as if I had seen them with my own eyes. I will give you a proof of my knowledge. Uh, Doctor, are these ordinary pills? Here. No. No, they're not. They're unusually light and transparent. Probably soluble in water. I couldn't really say any more without a proper analysis. I believe we have a quicker method to hand. I shall cut one of the pills in two and put one half safely back in its box. Now, we put a little water in this saucer. Then you will perceive that the doctor is right and the half pill readily dissolves in it. Mr. Holmes, this may be very interesting, but I cannot see what it has to do with this case. It has everything to do with it. I shall now add a little milk to the mixture to make it palatable. Huh? Now, on presenting it to the dog, we find that he laps it up quickly enough. Hmm. Now. Holmes? If you'll excuse us, Mr. Holmes, my colleague and I have a murderer to track down. Wait! It can't be a coincidence. It's impossible that it should be a coincidence. The very pills which I suspected in the case of Drebber are actually found after the death of Stangerson, and yet they're inert. What can it mean? What can it mean? Ah, oh, I have it. I have it. The other pill. The other pill. Cut it in two. More water. Yes, dissolve it. Milk. Stir. Here you are, boy. Try this. Look, Watson. Look, Gregson. Lestrade. What's the matter with the animal? Ha <laughs> ha! It's dead! It's dead! Oh, my God! <laughs> Good Lord. Poor creature. Of the two pills in the box, one was the most deadly poison and the other was entirely harmless. Oh, I ought to have known that before ever I saw the box at all. I'll have that pill box back, if you please. Uh, now look here, Mr. Holmes, we are all ready to acknowledge that you're a smart man and have your own methods of working, but we want something more than theory and preaching now. It's a question of taking the man. Gregson made his case out and he was wrong. I went after my man, Stangerson, and I was wrong too. You've thrown out hints here and hints there, but can you name the man who did it? Any delay in arresting the killer might give him time to strike again. The doctor's quite right, sir. There will be no more murders. You can put that consideration out of the question. You ask me if I know the name of the assassin. I do. Then it's well, your duty to... The mere knowing of his name is a small thing, however, compared with the power of laying our hands upon him. Give us the name, Mr. Holmes. If this man gains the slightest suspicion that the official force is onto him, he would change his name and vanish in an instant. You would be powerless to trace him. And now look here, sir. This is not good enough. You must give us the name. No. I cannot. Yes, sir. What is it, Mrs. Hudson? Someone for you, Mr. Holmes. Beg pardon, sir. Oh, really? <sighs> yes, Wiggins. I've got a cab downstairs. Oh, good boy. Here. Oh, thanks, sir. Uh, the cabman may as well help me with the boxes. Uh, ask him to step up, Wiggins. Yeah, right away, sir. 
What's this about, Mr. Holmes? I hope you're not planning to leave the capital. <laughs> uh, doctor, be so good as to fetch my handcuffs. Your handcuffs? In my writing desk, right-hand drawer. Oh, certainly. <sighs> Here you are. Mr. Holmes. Why don't you introduce this pattern at Scotland Yard? Look, they fasten in an instant. The old pattern's quite good enough if we can only find the right pair of wrists to put them on. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen, while I just strap up this portmanteau. Mr. Holmes? Ah, Tabby. Ah, just give me a help with this buckle, would you? Uh, move aside, sir. Now let me do it. Uh, what? Gentlemen, let me introduce you to Mr. Jefferson Hope, the murderer of Enoch Ribber and of Joseph Stangerson. No! Stop him! Hold him still! Hold his legs! I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to... Now, Mr. Hope, if I have no desire to do so, I assure you that I'm quite capable of breaking your arm, if you render it necessary. You let me go. I know any odds against me. Very well. Uh, these two gentlemen are police officers. Uh, and as soon as one of them regains his breath, I'd rather fancy you're going to find yourself under arrest. Are you all right up there, Lestrade? Everything well under control. <laughs> if he ever leaves the false, he's got a second career ready and waiting. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in much pain? <sighs> no one worse. Mr. Holmes, is it? Sherlock Holmes. Well, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, if there's a vacant place for a chief of the police, I reckon you're the man for it. <laughs> it's quite enough from you, Hope. Oh, really, Gregson? <clears throat> Yeah, it was the ring that gave it to me, of course. Uh, that and the wheel marks in the mud of the Brixton Road. <laughs> if that night had been dry, I never would have found your Hope. Can't we save this till we get to the yard, Mr. Holmes? The marks in the road showed me that the horse had wandered on slightly between arriving and departing. And that would never have happened if anyone had been in charge of it. It was clear from the footprints that only two men were ever there, so it followed that the driver of the cab was also the murderer. But how the devil did you know my name? As I said, through the ring. It was a question of motive. Despite your clumsy attempt to implicate German radicals, it was clear that the, the murder... papers had been full of secret societies and the like. I thought it might throw you off the scent. Well, it didn't. Carry on, Mr. Holmes. Political assassins are only too glad to do their work and to fly, whereas this murder had been done most deliberately. So it was a private matter. Uh, since a woman is usually involved somewhere in these affairs, the ring merely confirmed what I'd already decided. I wanted the last thing that villain saw to be Lucy's ring. The ring he forced on her finger. Keep it for the official statement, Hope. <sighs> so, Gregson, I did what you neglected to do. Hmm? I telegraphed to the Cleveland police for information concerning Drebber and trouble over any woman. The answer was conclusive. He had once applied for the protection of the law against one Jefferson Hope, a rival in love. Love! Love! I wish I could have seen him die. Ten, ten times over! Uh, Let me doctor. examine you. Let me alone. Come on, man. Uh, I do, do what you like. Uh, we must get to Scotland Yard as quickly as we can. This man is seriously ill. How long have you known? It's been getting worse for years. Have you seen a doctor recently? Last week. What did he tell you? Oh, what do you think he told me? I'm afraid he was quite correct. Oh, well, I care. I've done my work. Uh, look, Doctor, what exactly is all this about? Mr. Hope has an aortic aneurysm. Oh. Mm, what does that mean? It means, Gregson, that he could die at any moment. Good Lord. Mm. Is that right, Doctor? Yes, quite right. It's a failure of the main blood vessel leading from the heart. It swells up and eventually bursts. There's no cure. I got it. From overexposure and underfeeding. The salt like mountains. I don't care how soon I go. But I should like to leave an account of this affair behind me. I don't want to be remembered as a common cutthroat. That's great. <coughs> what do you think? 
Well, he's obviously seriously ill. If we take a statement from him now, it's quite likely to be thrown out of court as unreliable. Mm, or coerced. Mm. On the other hand... Exactly. Mm. Jefferson Hope, I am Inspector Tobias Gregson, and this gentleman is Inspector Giles Lestrade. Mm. You are at liberty to make your statement to us, but I am obliged to warn you that it will be taken down and may be presented in evidence at your trial. Very well. I'm on the brink of the grave. I'm not likely to lie to you. Every word I say is the absolute truth. I have to start some 40 years ago. In the whole world, I doubt if there's a more dreadful place in the great Central American desert. It's nothing but death, desolation. But if you'd been there, gentlemen, on one particular day all those years back, you'd have seen something moving, something alive. child. That's it. There's no sense in crying now, child. It ain't gonna help. The man's name was John Ferrier. The child was called Lucy. (laughs) Baby, we'll find a river by and by. By and by. John Ferrier told me once that he carried that baby three days three nights across the plains. Both their parents were dead, along with the rest of the wagon train. And he looked after her like she was his own. But they never did find that river. Here, drink this. Slowly, just a sip. That's it. A baby. She's asleep, peaceful as you like. God be praised. Amen. Amen. Don't try to speak. You're safe now. Safe? What are you people doing in this wilderness? Who are you? We are the persecuted children of God, the chosen ones of the angel Morona. We are the people of the holy Joseph Smith and his prophet. God in heaven, you're the Mormons. We are the Mormons. Ten thousand of them there were, trekking across the desert, looking for their promised land. And they found John Ferrier and the babe. I suppose you'd have to call it a miracle. As soon as he was able to walk, he was taken to one particular wagon. It was bigger and finer than the rest. Welcome, John Ferrier. I have been told your story by Brother Stangerson, who found you, and to whom you owe your life and that of the child. I'm grateful to him, to all of you. Are you the leader? We are led by the hand of God. Amen. Amen. Of course. If we take you with us, it can only be as believers in our own greed. We shall have no wolves in our fold. Will you come with us on these terms? I guess I'll come with you on any terms. Brother Stangerson? Prophet? Let it be your task to teach him our holy creed. Come, Brother Ferrier. You're in my care now. My wives will see to your needs. Brother Stangerson. Remember... But now and forever you are one of us. Brigham Young has said it, and he speaks with the voice of Joseph Smith, which is the voice of God.